Well, the purpose of my presentation is to speak about the attributes med of BGP and latency. I will be speaking on about this over my in my presentation. I am automation control engineer. I'm not in the telecommunications area normally. In other words, that is not specifically my role, but I have been working um, in this field for quite some time already. There are a couple of things that I would like to add on. I am a member of Brazil Peering Forum, and I work in the telecommunications area, telecommunications network areas. And when I see something that I think is wrong, I want to correct it, I almost get into a fight. I'm not going to rest until I manage to find a solution for this. And this is something that is part of my essence, and I try to do this as the best way possible. Now, I would like to speak about the MED attribute of BGP. We assume that you understand what this is about, but allow me to make an introduction. As I mentioned, I'm a member of Brazil Peering Forum. I feel very proud of being part of that group. We have um, very good quality products. One is the content created by this file that you can see here on the screen. Um, and let me take part of this content to explain about BGP. Leonardo Furtado is very creative, he is very colorful in his materials. And those who are not familiar with BGP, I recommend you to look into this material, which is excellent. And here he describes about the selection criteria for BGP routes. Now, one of the things that we have in BGP, in RFCs, is the definition of the attributes and this is one of the things that is defined as a non-transitive optional attribute. In other words, when I'm going to announce a route, I will not, I have the option of doing this. Non-transitive means that by default, it should not be retransmitted through the AS. There are some definitions. For example, it may be propagated over ID. BGP, this might be questionable. Some vendors, some known vendors, for some time did not respect this definition. But then there is another part that is in conflict with this. So I will be speaking about this now. RFC says that it must not be propagated to other neighboring ASs. Now, let us go back to this. You know, let, we'll go back to this in a while. Then there are other topics uh, that we like to mention. This is an optional non transitive attribute. And we are going to analyze the selection criteria for BGP. We can say that this is a quite a, a heavy part if we compare this with Cisco. Well, this is the fifth or sixth attribute to analyze the med is light. So you might ask yourself, Douglas, why are you going into something that doesn't mark such a difference? Now, I would like to speak about BGP potatoes. And the, those who work in networks already know this type of scenario which is quite common. So you discover the best use for the MED. So once again, here you have the files. Here they refer to interconnection models and precisely the potatoes are mentioned here. So what are the potatoes? And if we think about a hot potato in your hand, 
what do you want to do when you have a hot potato in your hand? You want to throw it away. You don't want to continue holding it in your hand. So you want to get rid of it. But a cold potato is something that you can carry to the next table without burning yourself. So that is what we also do more or less with UGP. Now, the med for quite some time, about 10 years ago, so it was an attribute that was only used in those scenarios. And this was in the traffic of the major companies. This is for the tier one companies. And 10 or 15 years ago, it wasn't so common that ASNs that were not so big would be located in different geographical areas in order to exchange routes. So in this example, we see that in the portal of Fortaleza, it is meaningful to send the traffic with the traffic in Porta Alegre, I want to get rid of that. And was it more meaningful to transport through my network and then deliver it there? What will define this? So let's see this later on. We're going to see this later on. What defines this? But the selection criteria are local preference, that is um, how, what impact I have on the route and how uh, by announcing more specific uh, prefixes with more ASP. I am dramatically against the more specific prefixes and some uh, pre propending to because this poisons the route. And this was very well said uh, uh, today by the first speaker, how prepending uh, can uh, uh, potentially cause many problems and many serious problems with asymmetry because of the issue of prefixes. So the next step here is the med. This material, I don't know who's the author of this material, but um, the link is there, so you can uh, um, uh, search it. So, and uh, the it is very educational. It is uh, very nice. I, I, I thought that it was very interesting the way he explained it. Let's see, say that an, um, the ISP is a, a green, ISP green is, um, uh, the quality of uh, the network is not very good. It's not too robust. Now, behind it, there are some clients that have a commercial uh, link with uh, the with uh, other clients. So I'm going to see whether I can see whether I can deviate the traffic uh, to you through Europe or through the network of these clients. And this has to do with money because the cost. Uh, to send from my network to North America or the cost uh, in my network in uh, North America for Europe, for uh, to repeat it. It has to do with cost and with quality. So if uh, there are many defects uh, in uh, the network, if it's too faulty and I want to be reassured with a client, the uh, sensible thing is to send it within my uh, link. And so there we have the problems of the scope of uh, the routing based on performance. So performance-based is a very uh, uh, um, encompassing uh, term. But later on, I'm going to speak of performance, but I'm going to focus my attention on uh, latency. This is Douglas, who dreams that uh, um, it's not all about the money. Well, in a way, it does, because indirectly, uh, and, uh, we see that the things that are not defined by money, in uh, sooner or later, they will be, because uh, if um, the uh, client is not happy, he will cancel the uh, uh, contract and that has an impact on costs. But so we have to focus on uh, the user's experience. This is just uh, um, here, I'm just adding it uh, to my talk and then we'll see the uh, met attribute. I've seen many things here. I saw a uh, value that was uh, invented uh, at randomly. And I, I, I think it's a nice, I saw uh, routes with values one, two, three, four, five, six. Why? Because I liked it. I like this number. And uh, 
here it's a hundred it's 100 so if you prefer more you can put 200 uh, will it work i don't know what is the rational for that criterion another criterion that i saw that uh, was being used I, I don't agree with is the price of the megabit uh, of the link uh, and uh, if my if my price is higher then uh, the um, there i put uh, the value and uh, you're go I'm go it's, this is going to be more profitable for me. Each bit, bit is going to be more profitable. And I personally don't agree with that, but it also happens. So the BGP, we are speaking of, uh, the, of IGP. Usually the costs are much better defined. They are more uh, fine-tuned. So usually they come uh, with the specifications of using defined uh, parameters with the definition of based on nature information. That is that it's not made up, it's, uh, it's not artificial. One of the experiences that I had contact with is uh, because they use uh, the, the information of uh, distance in meters of a submarine cable and uh, they, they uh, and pass it through the BIGP. Uh, so one methodology that is the one that I like better is uh, the latency between one point and the other. That can be done from uh, the IGP or also um, uh, in an other way that I'm going to describe later. Before discussing that, let me tell you about the uh, uh, the attributes of MED BGP. I, I, it's, I, I don't want to speak of the advantages, but rather of the disadvantages of the arbitrary usage of a local preference indiscriminately. What does this mean? Well, I here I have, I participated in a working group uh, of um, NECBR and uh, I made a joke with a friend because I mentioned what was happening and um, somebody was in Brasilia connected to uh, IX Brasilia and in Sao Paulo and she used uh, the uh, one of the um, um, local preps of Sao Paulo and put it for 200 and the IX of uh, the federal district for 300 of the federal the one of the federal district has data about the federal government it is very special and the her recipe was very nice but it it looked very nice she was preferring the principal the main routes of sao paulo and brasilia but there there was a company that um uh, did sort of games that became uh, very popular around the world. And the company was uh, hosted in uh, Rio, its headquarters was in Rio de Janeiro. And then they hired uh, a company that was called uh, Ultranet to uh, show their networks in, uh, in the routes in Brazil and in the world. And that is where things got complicated because the Ultranet uh, headquarters is in Fortaleza. And they have uh, uh, in Rio de Janeiro or in Sao Paulo, the people would connect with a, uh, uh, 10 milliseconds of latency, but then they connected from Fortaleza to Rio de Janeiro with about 30 milliseconds latency. And one of the requirements of the contract was that Ultranet should have presence in different uh, point of IXBR in Brazil, and one of them is Brasilia, uh, the federal district. So the way, uh, so, so as this, as the headquarters were in Fortaleza, they took a, a link from their headquarters uh, from uh, there to uh, Fortaleza. And there, Jossi, uh, the Josivan, uh, Josivan's net, she didn't realize, and any route coming from the same AS through two different routes, 
will prefer the route that comes to the federal district. And it was there that things got uh, complicated because in Brazil, Sao Paulo is in the 10 millisecond uh, list. Um, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro is 10, 15 milliseconds. But so here it prefers in the case of from uh, uh, to Recife, it, the loop continues, uh, ends up giving a latency of 80 milliseconds. This is a clear example of how the discriminate use of a, a local prefer is not as good as it would seem, and we can improve it significantly. Now, how can we improve it significantly? Here, I'm going to tell you about an email that uh, I exchanged with uh, with uh, the customer support of cogent communications this is not i'm not this is not uh, um, an advertising but uh, really that day they uh, gave me a very good service and they gave me a huge uh, flexibility in the routing parameters for some time well that's no longer the case but for some time cogent the company was present in rio de janeiro and sao paulo and for some reason that i'm not aware of directly from Rio de, Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo are not connected. That means that the packets that went from Rio de Janeiro to Sao Paulo had to go to um, uh, Miami and from there to Sao Paulo. So I started looking at those routes and I saw that there was um, a problem there. And uh, I sent them an email uh, and they told me that um, this well, there was a latency that if I put a filter there to adjust the milliseconds, it would work perfectly well. And just as they said it, by uh, that fixed my problem. So the local preference was uh, reduced for things that were over 30 milliseconds. And um, so the filter worked perfectly well. and. Uh, that I was very happy with the way it worked. So why is it that they don't do this more? How can I uh, make everybody use it? So once again, we are going to talk of BGP. And uh, uh, BGP monitoring systems, one of the things, one of the methods that uh, available for monitoring not just BGP, but uh, also information in uh, within routing through uh, a number of mechanisms is by developing, generating uh, information on latency from one link to the other. What I do at present is use uh, resources, depending on the case, uh, Cisco for I IPSLA, Juniper has Probe, Huawei has NQA, where I'm going to generate, uh, uh, in, in my hops, uh, I'm going to see the value of the latency in uh, uh, milliseconds, and uh, I apply it to define both for import and export. In this example, it is very clear because we have the uh, a latency of uh, five AS uh, 100, five milliseconds, 105, uh, 80 milliseconds. Uh, that is the, the, the latency to communicate with IXP. And IXP with AS 300, we have 50 milliseconds. And uh, so in this case, AS 100 has 25 milliseconds to AS 200 and then 20 milliseconds uh, to this uh, AS 200 has uh, 20 milliseconds to AS 300. So depending on where you go, you are going to have a different latency and that should have an impact when choosing the route. But even in uh, taking the best path, uh, five milliseconds or the worst of 18 plus 15 milliseconds, even like that, it would be better than going through the IXP. 
So this is especially important of the Brazilian ASNs connecting to remote IXPs because we have a very special situation there. And the latency would be perfect for this kind of analysis. Good. So I mentioned the use of a network analyzer. Now, how can I do it uh, in my med? I'm not reinventing the wheel. And this is the most important thing that I want, uh, the message I want to convey. I'm not asking you to re uh, uh, write uh, the uh, BGP code, uh, but we depend uh, solely on uh, the uh, existing configuration. So what I do is I use the measurements of the routers and I connect them with tools to different types of tools. I put that uh, as a routine within a tool that will use those measures in the routers and it is not uh, too complex. Uh, now, uh, some people say, well, do you really have to put all those additional tools for it to work? No, not really, because depending on uh, who your provider is, there are internal um, inside uh, mechanisms that you can use. For instance, in the case of Juniper, uh, Juni it has Juniper event scripts, Cisco has an embedded event manager, Huawei has open programmability system. So each of them has its own uh, tool. But the ideal is to be able to monitor it. And if there's anything that you have to solve, then you solve it. Microtik does this very well. And the idea... Others are not so good. Now, I even highlighted the part of BFG, which is a mechanism that shows the availability between two peers. And one of the things that you can obtain is the circuit latency through the monitor protocol. I tried to use this as a parameter, but I reached the conclusion that only few companies have enabled this. So we have to think about this for the future. I think that one of the best metrics is not to think to one side and the other, but to use the BFD. So I'm not here to provide the full solution. What I want to do is to generate consensus so we can all find answers together. I said I was to speak about performance-based routing. There is something that inspired me this year, but did not work. Why did not this work? Well, this is because in order to implement this, it, the code had to be rewritten of all BGPs that were going to use this resource in the world. It's about 70,000 ESNs. So if it's two routers, it's twice as much. So changing the code for that, those routers is not so easy. It takes the industry two years to release this code and it would take five more years. So really the adoption for this was not going to work. So we have to think that this is not practical. So I will start to wrap up. To finish my presentation, what I was suggesting is the following, or at least to start to making a suggestion and to state an idea of a standard for using MED for, uh, based on cumulative latency. This is an RFC, which is graceful BGP session shutdown. This can be implemented in our ASN. And any router that is less than 10 years old can be used for implementing this. The idea is precisely to use the resources we already have available based on an exclusive based on routing policies a standard would have to be developed to 
respect the latency. And the standard community for MET that is based on latency. So that would be all. Thank you very much, Douglas. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions, but if you are kind enough to give us your email address so that people can then